Welcome back, fellow listener. It's a bit late, I know. Uh, I have a lot to, to do today, so I have no time for breaks. I have a lot of work. I have a lot of work also. So, uh, we are ready to continue our adventure as a, a pirate captain. But first, a brief summary. We are reading the third game book of the Saga the Barbarian series, written by Gary Gygax and Flynn Dille. It is the uh, second, third book, uh, the third game book of this type, is set in uh, the world of Greyhawk, the first setting of Dungeons and Dragons ever created. So, in the first, in the third book, The Crimson Sea, we begin with our girl, Kezakota, who was uh, kidnapped by a uh, crew of slavers. Then, for trying to save her, we became pirate. Uh, we, we became a pirate, a pirate captain. And then we start to search her. But first, we have to uh, find a treasure for our crew in the Isle of Dread. So now we start, well, we begin uh, by ship. We have uh, a ship, we have a sea map of the zone and we have to sail from one point to another. And we, we have to roll any, any time we we sail because the currents and the winds uh, blah 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 so let's start i play one hour until uh, quarter past seven i think then okay so i have the i want to go uh to the isle of dread then i have to roll a lot of dice uh, to found if I stay on the on the road or not. Sorry for the light; it's a bit late. So, so three. No. Okay. Then I want to go there. Okay. Uh, counterclockwise, I think. To the right. Okay. Better, better. Then I want to go there. One, okay, we go there. Then I want to go there. Okay. Uh, so, I want to go to the Isle of Dread, there. Good. Uh, we did it. Oh, I love that. B section 50, 51. Yep, yeah, sorry. I had to go. Yeah, I know. The light is a pretty horror movie light. So. Run aground. The coast of the Isle of Dread is littered with the remains of ships that have failed to make the crossing. As you pass close to its shore, you, your crew eyes the skeletons of dead ships worldly, but the helmsman expresses confidence that sailing in this placid sea will be easy. Suddenly the ship is struck by a stiff wind. The helmsman fights frantically for control of the ship, but it seems nothing can stop the sharp drift. Uh, The sharp drift into the island. Men dive for cover as a loud screech echoes from deep in the hull. Timbers snap as they are dashed against rocks and suddenly everybody is thrown forward. 
you have run aground, lost four ship strand points. After respecting the damage, you set out to make repairs, leaving several crew members behind to pump water from the hole. Not far down the shoreline, you find a be uh, beached Itaxian galleon and decide to explore its abandoned cabins. The great ship is strangely eerie inside, it does not seem to have been smashed by the waves. The food supplies are fully stocked, the longboats are missing, and strangest of all, it has not been looted in. In the captain's cabin, you find a chest of gold coins. Your share is 400 gold coins. Whoa, I'm rich! Four hundred, a lot. So five hundred sixty-four. Come on, come on. Okay. Clearly, the man who once said this ship had not met their hands at the bottom of the ocean. They had walked off the boat, but to where? Taking wood from the galleon, the crewmen quickly make repairs on the midnight reaper. Repair three twelve ship points by flipping the page three times. Taking foodstuffs from the abandoned Ictaxian galleon, you and your crew set out to prepare supper on shore and wait for the high tide to keep take you back to the sea. Return to the map and keep sailing. But I want to get to this Isle of Dread. This is the treasure? I don't think so. I don't know. I really don't know. But well, 400 gold pieces is a bit of a treasure. Uh, how many hit points my ship have? They didn't see it. Oh well, well, no problem. Then I go to A. I continue straight and go to A. I have to roll the die. I don't want to shipwreck on an isle. Good. I miss for a little, but not too much. So I try again. Uh, I miss from the other side. Damn. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I arrive in A, section 80. Eighty. I think there are. Almost. Section 8, 80, the mysterious island. Anchoring your ship in a small bay, you will serve the barren and desolate island. Neither man, nor plant, nor animal appears to live on this wind-scarred dot of mesas and blowing sands. Gain one experience mark for successfully landing. Ooh. Okay, good. If you wish to do repairs, flip the pages and multiply the number you get by 5. Then return that many ship strength points to your ships. ship. If your crew is made up of slaves, go back to the map section 39 and set sail again. If your crew is made up of pirates, and we are. Keep reading. Hot dry wind blow up from the south making the pirates' short tempers even shorter. As you step onto the island, you feel a menacing foreboding presence. The island looks haunted. A ghost forest of fossilized trees resembles a graveyard and tall buttes sculpted by the hot winds into bizarre shapes, loom over you like stone phantoms. Low rumblings of mutiny are heard from pirates' mouths as you begin the quest. The quest. There are three promising places to search for treasure on the island. Near the, near the center of the island are a number of pilot boulders. Section 86. To the south is a chimney-shaped mesa which stands taller than any of the others. And to the north is a steep bottle with dozens of mysterious holes 
in the side of it. Hmm. A pretty hard choice. I don't really know. It's pretty, uh, I have to try fortune here because I don't really know. But I like the mesa. Uh, I think. I don't really know. Mm. I, I have to think about it. Uh, give me a minute. Mm. The mesa or not? I don't know. I think I go with the Mesa 67 because uh, uh, it's where I hide a treasure, so why not? I don't want the revolt. Come on. I have to go to 77. Uh, the egg butt. The wind moans through the buttes like a dying man as you climb, two other pirates follow behind you to make sure you are not deceiving them. Egg on the mesa, you get a marvelous view of the island. There is not much to see, endless stretches of sand scratch the rock and mesas. Reaching the top of the butt, you hear a loud squawk. And see and see a flutter of wings. Two enormous eagles with 15 foot wingspans dive on you, their talons poised to rip your flesh. As they approach, you draw your sword to make a final stand atop the butt. The butty. The predators arrive with ear shattering screams and vanish with the two pirates who had accompanied you. Clutching your companions in their talons, they fly into the distance. I and they, they let loose their mighty claws and drop the man to screaming deaths on the rock below. Knowing that you will meet the same fate if you try to descend from the mesa, you await their second attack. You will fight each of the birds alternately. The first bird strikes and you strike it back. Then the second bird strikes and you strike it back. So, let's go with the fight, uh, finally. We didn't fight for a lot. No, it's a lie. We fight a lot in this book. <laughs> Still, I didn't have my chainmail, but I have only my magic sword. So I, I have 28 points. The giant eagles have uh, 12 each. So let's start. And I am level four. So three damage to the first eagle. No, sorry, the eagle attacked me and they do one damage to me, 19. And I respond. Whoa, 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 three damage to the eagle. So I am 19 and the eagle is nine. Good. So the second eagle attack and they do another damage. I am 18. I respond and I do four damage to the eagle. So nine, eight. 18, nine, eight. The first, another damage. And my uh, three damage. Uh, yeah, three damage. So uh, I am 17, the first eagle is six. Zero. And I do another four damage. I hit particularly the second eagle because it's the second time I do four damage to it. To, to it. So I am uh, 17, uh, the first eagle is six. The second eagle is four. So the first attack. Ouch. Two damage to me. I am 15. And I do three damage again. 
the second miss and another four what i hate the second eagle i really hate the second eagle i kill her before the first okay so uh i am uh, uh 15 and uh, remain only one eagle with three hit points and uh, it attack it, it miss and i kill her so uh i win with 15 hit points remains Ooh. Okay. When you have defeated your opponents, go to section 90. Whoa. Una più vicina non c'era. Sorry, uh, I speak Italian. Sorry. I didn't do the it more. Okay, nine. Mesa of the giant eagles. Mesa. The second giant eagle is ring ripped from its body, crashes to the ground with a hideous scream. Take game two experience marks. Okay. Far below, your men cheer and you proudly raise your sword. Suddenly, the Misa beneath your crumbles, dropping you yard down. As you struggle to get out of the newly formed hole, you hear soft metallic clicks. Looking down, you discover that you are up to your knees in treasure. Yeah! Marveling at the genius of the pirate who buried his treasure above the ground, you shower your men with plunder. Gain uh, 1,500 gold pieces. Whoa, I am at 264. Uh, 2,064. Whoa. At the bottom of the chest, below the gold, jewels and pearls, is an alternate iron breastplate and shing, shing reeves. That must have been made for a king. There is no question in your mind or in the minds of your men who will get this treasure. The king's breastplate and shing reeves will, will make you nearly invulnerable to low-level attackers. As long as you wear them, they will deduct two hit points from any attack on you, and if you are ever in need of money, the armor will sell for 1,000 gold pieces. Damn! Whoa! Okay. Breastplate. Okay. It's a real te treasure. Damage. Okay. For two days, the men are revel on the Isle of Dreads and you regain all of your hit points. Return to the map much richer and sail away. Okay, whoa, I found the treasure. So now I have to attack Itaxia, I think. I, I, I think the pirate, the pirate want to go to Itaxia. So I go to Itaxia. Uh, from here is a pretty long road to Itaxia. I have to go down there. Okay, I form a road. Then I go south. Uh, to me, the road, the dice. I go south. Okay, then I go there. I stray away. Uh, okay. Not so bad. I try again. Damn. I go to section L71. It's pretty hard to navigate. The Black Sails of Itaxia 
Warned of your presence in the Crimson Sea, it actions prowl the water in small, fast cruises. It comes a little surprise when the lookout cries, Black sails on the horizon! Running to the bow, you spy the triangular sails which rise above the water like shark's fin. All hands on deck, you shout. Prepare for battle. You are about to do, you are about to do battle at sea. Combat at sea works in the following manner. The Midnight Reaper has 30 ship strand points. The ships you will encounter will have less. However, you may encounter more than one ship. Battle, battle is done ship by ship. Thus, if there is more than one ship, you fight them one at a time. I have to roll a die. And I get it too. A flotilla of Itaxian cruisers. In this battle you will fight three Itaxian cruisers. Remember your three battle options. If you flip a four, you have sunk the Itaxian ship. If you flip a... Uh, sorry, I know, option one, ramming. If you flip a four, you have sunk the Itaxian ship. If you flip a one, flip again. If you flip another one, you are sunk and go to section 66. Missile fire, both sides fight at the same level. Boarding. Flip once for each strand point you have, and deduct one man from the other side each time you flip four. Then do the same for the Taxian. After you have flipped for each side, count both sides again. Repeat the process until one side is wiped out or you want to use another battle option. Remember, you only fight one ship at a time. After that, you and the second ship fight. So, it's pretty complicated. I go with a ramming with the first one and I roll a four. Whoa! <laughs> Success! So I go with the second. I ramming to the second. No, miss. Uh, they call me the pirate captain of the Bullhorn. Okay, no, sorry. That's stupid. Uh, so I didn't try again. Now I go with the um, uh, missile fire. I attack. Uh, I miss the attack, they I miss too. I try again with the roaming and I sunk it. Okay, all the one remains. Then uh, I try the roaming, no. Then I will try the miss missile fire, uh, miss. I roll a lot of one now. Another one, they respond and they do one damage to me. 29 strand points, then I try again the roaming options, miss the missile. I do no damage to the, this third ship is pretty strong. That hit, it, it, it hits me again. Oh. I try the roaming. Good! Finally, when you think all of the Taxians gain seven, 7 experience marks, return to the map and keep sailing. I, uh, you can assure it. 7 experience marks. I am at 1994, 95, sorry. So. Okay. So, I want to go to Itaxia, to the Predit, so, to, to, okay, I roll for the sail and I go uh, in the wrong direction, uh, but I can try again, okay, good, section J, section 43, 45. 45 section 
uh, the taxi on Ford. After battling a fierce wind and drifting slightly, of course, the pilot tries to right the ship's direction. Suddenly, the man in the crow's nest shouts a cry of alarm as a straggling ball of fire passes over the ship and splashes into the water next to you. Wheeling around, you see the jagged battlements of a Taxian fortress on a distant cliff. You must get away from the fort before the Taxian turn the Midnight Reaper into firewood. In order to do so, you must flip a foe. The Taxian, meanwhile, fear on you. Combat against the Taxian catapults works like a land combat. At each turn, you flip to flee the fort and then, if you were not successful, the Taxian fired at your vessel. There. So, I roll for escape. And I escape. Whoa, whoa, that was fast. I rolled a four. <laughs> that was really fast. Whoa. A, a bit of luck. Then I want to... No. Okay, go on. I can try to arrive at Tabu Bellabu. And uh, I want to see what is it in, uh, in a letter K, so I strike for that. Ah, I go off road. Okay, now, now I get it. Section 50. No, maybe this. Section 50. Section 50. Then I go to tell uh, the uh, anyway. Mere word, uh, Taxian Galleons. Mere words could not adequately describe the greed of the Taxian, as they control the single strip of land that connects the southern half of their realm to the northern. They have used geography to enforce massive tariffs and hired privateers to prowl the seas to discourage sea trade. What money they do not make from this form of extortion, they raise through the sale of slaves. While their neighbors to the south starve, the Taxian force the neighboring kings to pay to keep their dark mailed armies from invading. While their neighbors to the north struggle in the fields, the Taxian demand a percentage of their revenues to buy off invasion and keep trade routes running. Scarcely anywhere in the realm is there a coin that is not stained with the Taxian's wit, and almost nowhere in the realm is there a slave who has not at one time or another been whipped on the Taxian trading docks. Thus, when the billowing sails and fat hulls of a Taxian ship sail over the horizon, you look forward to revenge. You do, not, you do not have to plunder the ship. If you want to do so, go to section 74. If not, return to the map in section 39. I go with the plunder. I am a pirate. 74. Section 74. Pirating a Taxian Galleon. The first time you come to this section, go fight the Galleon. Every other time, flip the pages. If you get an even number, fight another Galleon. Pirating works like this. Before each round of combat, flip the pages. If you get a 4, the Taxian Galleon surrenders. Gain 50 gold pieces for each strand points the Taxian ship has. If you get a 1, flip again. If you get a second one, the Galleon escapes. If the Galleon neither surrender nor escape, you must do combat. You may break off the attack and sail away anytime you want. Combat works exactly like land combat. Okay. So, let's try. I have to roll another die. And, uh, oh, wrong die. Dice. And I roll a four. Really? I, 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 sur, I, I surrender. I, 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 I assure you. I roll and then four. W what? <laughs> I already make it surrender. Okay, good. I, I, I take a lot of money from them. 
500 gold pieces from this galleon. Whoa! 500 gold pieces. I am rich. I have a 2,564. Whoa! Okay. So, my men are happy, so it's time to go to tell... Oh, I didn't remember the name. And uh, now I read it. Tabu Belabu. What a name. So, Tabu Belabu. I have to go there. And I have to roll to go there. And I roll. Four. Okay, still water, but I get a letter, a letter O. Section 69, I didn't like it. Okay, mutiny check. If your crew is not composed of pirates, return to the map. But I am a pirate, so... And keep sailing. If your crew is composed of pirates and you have retrieved the treasure from the Isle of Dread, sails on, sail on. If however, if however, your crew is composed of pirates and you have not retrieved your treasure, keep reading. Well, I have the treasure, so I sail on. And it's my last roll on the ship. Hmm. There is a lot of letters on the map, but I but I have to go to um, Tabu El Labu, I, if I remember the name well. So, uh, no, I have to go to section. No, okay, almost, okay. I arrive in... Uh, so I have to go to Tabu El Labu. Now I can make an error. So... Roll. Good. I arrive. Let uh, section E... I think... Yep. Is an E. So, section 95. Whoa. 95. I have to go pretty... 90... 90... 95. Tabu, de, tabu Belabu. And then um, I think uh, we stop here. Because uh, Tabu Belabu... Uh, tabu Belabu maybe is the last... Uh, uh, the last point, the last location of our adventure in this book. Because uh, Tezgakota, my girl, is in Tabulabu, maybe. The sun hangs high in a pure blue sky as the Midnight Reaper comes with sight of Tabu Belabu. At first, the great city appears as a thin white line on the Taxian coast. But drawing closer, you make out individual domes, towers, minarets, minarets and pointed spires. By late afternoon, the ship comes near port. A mass of people of all races, from proud kings of the Momboddo Empire to white-haired Valzar barbarians, swarm about the docks like insects. Never before have you seen battlements as tall or as sturdy as those that surround the city. Close to shore, you order a long boat dropped and say for farewell to your traveling companions, for you have reached your destination and they still have long voyages to make. A blistering mid-afternoon, it rises off the dockside streets as you push your way through the clamor of the crowd. 
I descend to the dockies, the bazaar. Here merchants, dressed like sultans, sultans from, from ch childhood tales, call to you, inviting you to spend money in their stores, which sell everything from grotesque animals to delicate pastries. It is not long before a young boy dressed in bright garb and wearing a pair of pointed shoes with else attached to the hands approaches you. You, st you stifle aloud at his ridiculous garb as he speaks to you through a long dropping, uh, drooping mustache, which is ob 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 obviously fake. You look to be lost, Oretican. I show you the city. For several moments you ugly over a price and he invites you to come out of the sun and into his stall. With a rattle of beds you are led into the stall, once inside you discover a small ornate room. Carpets have been fat fastened to the walls and a strange brass candelabra hangs from the ceiling. It stinks of foreign scents which burn in a small bowl. For a moment you feel as though you are about to be overwhelmed by the fumes. Lunging at the bowl, you hurl it out of the room and onto the street. Your guide turns around in alarm. What have you done? I will not be fooled so easily. You intended to bring me in here and drag me with that foul stench. Oh no, my friend, that is incense of sandalwood, mask and mirror. He responds, showing you more incense. With that, loud louder erupts on the far side of the room and you see a strange figure sitting in the corner. Your flesh tingles for the old man who wears a flowing silk gown was not in the room when you entered and you did not see him arrive. As the young boy runs to recover his bowl, the old man motions for you to sit down. Grasping the hilt of this word, you remain standing. Very well, ma very well then, stand if you must, he says, with long bony fingers, the old man reaches for a deck of cards, which are emblazoned with strange drawings. Chanting slightly under his breath, he lays them out in an odd order. After laying out the cards, the old man looks up at you. Beneath a mane of white hair glow shimmering blue eyes, which seem to sparkle with a much younger age than his own. The cards told me you would come, and now they tell me what you will do here. I do not believe in full southern magic, you say, turning to leave. You have come from the north to rescue a slave maiden from the palace of the Sultan Jazir. How could you know that? you ask, drawing your sword. In the cards, I see much more, he says. I see tears of joy, but also, also tears of grief should you succeed. At this point, you have a choice. You may end your quest here and tally up your treasure and weapons, or you may continue with your mission. If you want to continue, keep reading. I can end the book here? No, it's pretty uh, boring this way. I want the end, the real end, not this ridiculous uh, uh, escape end I sign this point because I don't know, maybe I, I end in a trap, so I s sign this point, if I die, I return here, like a checkpoint, okay? It's not, uh, uh, I think it's a good choice, 95. <sighs> Nothing shall stop my quest, you say. Very well, he responds. But do not say I did not warn you. You boldly step forward toward the man, your sword drawn. If I let you live, you might warn the Saltoon for of me. And if you strike me, you will have lost a valuable ally, for I hate the Saltoon more than you do.
he responds. You must make a choice, either attack the old man or make him into an ally. I think I go with ally because uh, she says to me uh, of the dangers, so why do that? I think I'm near the end but I didn't end uh, it here anyway I think I near the end of the book. So I go on. Section 91, making an ally. I saw the fire in your eyes, lad, and you did well to douse it. The old man arises, and you are horrified to discover that you can see all the way through him. For even you, Sagard, cannot kill those who are already dead. The Sultun Jazir killed me. In life I was a Sultun. Sultun. But now I am a ghost. For holding your anger, I shall give you the stone stone. The old man gestures to the young boy who scampers off and fetches a box. When he opens the box, a painful blinding light strikes you and you are temporarily paralyzed. In the box is the stone stone. If used properly, it will help you in difficult combat. Anytime you show it, it will give you two free attacks. However, you must use it sparingly. Each time you wish to use it, flip the pages. If you flip a 4, flip again. If you flip a 3 or a 4 the second time, it has shattered and you may not use it again. Note this on your status chart. Okay, stunstone. I have to... I have still the fire darts. I think I may use it. Because I forgot of it. Stan, stan, stone. Damn. Okay. Beware, beware, Sagar. The girl shall be in grave danger should you attempt to rescue her. Her life shall be long if you do not. Do you still want to attempt to rescue her? And again, I can't surrender here the quest. I, I'm curious to see what's happening. So I try. I will take my chances, you respond. Then I shall lead you to the palace tonight. Go to section 89. Okay. <clears throat> the Saltoon Jazir's Palace. You and the old man creep silently under the light of the Taxian moon. Before setting out, the ghost made you promise to, to help him gain revenge against the Saltoon before freeing Ken Sakota. Tug, you, Tug, you agreed. You are good. Uh, sorry, it's pretty late. Too, you are good. You soon realize that you had little hope of success without him. Climbing to, climbing to the top of a small hill, the ghost points out to the Saltoon's palace. Surrounded by high outer battlements and ringed with tall minarets, is a huge dome. At the top of the walls and each minaret are Itaxian archers wearing tall pointed caps. The Saltoon Jazir, as befits his conceit lives at the top of the great dome, protected by guards everywhere. I use, as you see, it's a guard. The ghost matters to you. There is no way in from the ground. You will be pincushioned by arrows, for the Saltoon employs the best archers in the realm. If there is no way in, then how am I to succeed? With that, the ghost lets out a loud whistle and smiles gleefully. From above, in moments, a fluttering black shape appears as the horizon and wings its way. Uh, sorry, I didn't see it. <laughs> and wings its way to the hill where you stand. As it draws closer, you shudder, for it looks like something only a demon or demented sorcerer could create. In all ways, it is like a bat, 
save for its wingspan, which is nearly 10 feet across. The young boy you met in the street rides it atop a high saddle. From whence did this horror come? you ask. It is a Devonian bot. Quite common among the Slate Mountains, the Devonians use them in place of horses, and so shall you. You shudder as you approach the creature, but despite its ugly appearance it seems friendly. As you get on top of it, the ghost explains how it is ridden. The bat carries you into the star sudden night sky of Itaxia. In moments you reach the outer battlements of the Saltoon's palace and drift over them. Up close, the palace is breathtakingly beautiful, built in grandiose proportions and composed of this sapanous, milky white marble of unreal purity. Surrounded by minarets, the bulbous dome crowns the entire palace like a halo. Piling on the bat's reins, you descend to the great dome. Suddenly you hear a shout from one of the minarets, followed by the twang of powerful bow. The arrow streaks toward you, flip the pages six times and take two hit points each time you flip a four. But I, I can't take two hit points because I have the breastplate, so it's useless. Nearing the dome, you hear the jarring clang of alarm bells from high on the minarets and see men scrambling about the courtyard. Landing on the dome, you hitch the bat to the carved stonework and creep to the top of the great hole of marble where you find a window and peer inside. Far below, in the Saltoon's throne room, a banquet is in progress. Seated at the great table, kept cool by fun beards and surrounded by various brightly dressed Itaxian princes, emirs and, uh, and satraps is a small fat man with wine running down his face. Without doubt, this is the Saltoon Jazir. Your anger peaks when you discover that seated next to him is Quetzalcoatl, dressed in the sparse costume of a dancing girl. Your sword powered by anger, you smash the window and brightly colored glass showers down on the dining table, causing the guests to flee for the door. How dare you leave me without my permission? The Saltoon shouts to the flying, fleeing guest. I will have you cowardly heads for it. You won't be alive long enough to have my head, one guest responds to the fat despot. In the confusion, you drop the rope and shine it down, unti and shine it down until you are low enough to drop the table. Upon seeing you, Kezakota shouts, Sagard! As you land on the table, you draw your sword and prepare to make good your pledge to the ghost. The Saltoon, much to your surprise, barely moves. He lifts a small oil lamp with chubby fingers and gives you an oily smile. Did you think it would be so easy to steal my favorite harem girl and slay me, Ratican? Who is going to stop me? You shout, stepping toward him. Unperturbed, the Saltoon rubs his rubby laden hand against the lamp and the thick green smoke rises in a great pillar. When the smoke clears, there stands a tall tarbinid tarbunid genie. Destroy him, shouts the Saltoon, lugging and sitting back confident of the outcome. The genie, pulling a scimitar that is nearly your eight from his belt, steps over to attack you. You must fight the genie, but knowing that you have little chance of defeating him, you try to connive a way to grab the lamp from the Saltoon and thus turn the genie on the Saltoon itself. Stealing the lamp works in the following man manner. Fight as you will normally. However, each time you flip a four, you have stunned the genie and may therefore try to get the lap lamp by flipping another four. If you have a stun stone, you may also use it, and each time you successfully stun the genie, you may try to get the lamp. So I go with the stun stone because it's a bit late. And they have to roll for the stun stone. And then for the steel. Uh, guys, I do another four. Really, I, I steal the map. Uh, I, I roll a lot of f oh, four this day. Still in the lamp, as the genie reels about in confusion from your last attack, you rush to Saltoon Jazir. The Saltoon, fearing your spent fury, quickly jumps from his seat and drops the lamp. 
Grabbing the lamp, you see the genie poised to destroy. Poised to destroy you. However, when he realizes that you hold the lamp, he blows. Grab the saltoon and tear the palace to the ground. You shout. Gain three experience marks. Okay. I am at 98. The genie then chases after the fleeing man. Meanwhile, hearing the rhythmic footsteps of the palace guard, you take Katsakota by the hand, dash to the rope and begin climbing. Down below, the genie grabs the Saltoon Jazir and throws him over and through another great window, arcing over the skyline of Tabu Belabu. Reaching the top of the dome, you and Katsakota climb up. Arrows fly through the windows after you as the genie desperately battles Beatles, the palace guards. Go to section 78. Okay. I'm pretty curious. Revenge of the Dead Kingdom. Fleeing from the palace, you and Kezakota climb your thin rope to the dome. In the soft moonlight, you stop to kiss her and then run quickly toward the Davanian bat. As you're about to take off on, a bat, on the bat, a fiery dagger whizzes past your head. Turning, you see it familiar heavy figure silhouetted against the stars. It is tall and thin and clad only in black. Even in the dim light, you are able to see a pair of burning yellow eyes and a long reptilian tongue. It is a slith assassin. I knew that one day you will come here, Sagard. Tonight I shall avenge the slits and the priestess shall die. As the slith assassin draws a dagger, you kick the bat. He takes off with Kezakota, then before this little assassin can throw one of his daggers at her, you charge him. Delivering a desperate blow, you knock the dagger from the slit's hands. Stunned, he desperately flees to the top of the dome. You give chase and finally catch him atop the dome. You strike first. Okay. Oh, a lot of action. I have a fight the assassin, but I have a breastplate, a magic sword, and a roll of things, and a level 4, and a roll 2, so 3 damage to the slit, he go down to 20, he respond, no damage to me, I respond again, whoa, 4 damage, he go down to 60, he respond, 16, sorry, no damage to me, I respond. He go down to 13, this press, this press plate is uh, pretty strong. He respond, he, he, miss, he can't do damage to me, so I respond, another 3 damage, he go down to 10, I am still 20 and he's still 10. Then I do only uh, 2 damage to him, 20, uh, to 8, he, he respond, nope, another 2 damage, 20 to 6, uh, he can't do damage to me, so I have win. When you have defeated him, go to section 87, okay. Defeating the slit assassin, jumping upward, you hit the slit assassin. He stumbles for a moment and tumbles like a rug doll down the side of the dome. Still in the last of your strength, you step to the window only to see the genie's lifeless body on the floor, surrounded by taxi and guards. Gain three experience marks. I am at 101 experience marks. Okay. Okay. Knowing that you have little time left, you slay down the dome. When you reach the ground, you discover that the palace is in chaos. People are running in all directions. Taking advantage of, the, advantage of the chaos, you dash to the gate and flee. Hours later, you arrive in the bazaar. Once again, the ghost is read, reading his tarot cards. Where is she? you demand. Where did you have the bat take her? She is far, she is far away, the ghost responds. Where you were supposed to be, I do not think you will be so, success so successful. 
Where is she? you demand, not accepting his last answer. That is not for me to tell. For the cards, you say you will not see her again for several years. And then it will be by chance. What? Angered, you instinctively grip the hilt of your sword, but you quickly draw your hand away. You have no recourse against the ghost. However, the old man says, I owe you quite a bit. Take what you want from my chest of treasure. He points to a tattered chest across the room. Walking it with your sword, you break the lock. Even in the flickering candlelight of the stall, the treasure gleams. Picking up the chest, you walk to the door. The ghost reacts in horror. Take some of it, but do not be greedy, he calls. But you ignore his shouts and step to the door. The angry ghost gets up and chases you. However, his attempts to grab you are as futile as, futile as you attempt to walk him with your sword. Gain 2,000 pieces and go to section 96. 2,000. I have a lot of monies. I have 4,564 uh, 4, gold pieces. I am damn rich. So, go to section 96 and I think this is the end. A pretty short book. I didn't expect to end it uh, this evening. Section 96, Tales in the Hot Wind. A hot desert wind brings strange tales to the city of minorets and dark sorcery. Deep in the Kasba, where swarthy-faced, turbaned men smoke from long pipes and tell tales of fantastic treasures, a man all in black with a garish golden earring beckons you. Come, Rattican, for I read your mind. You turn to see his beady brown eyes staring deeply into yours. Forget the small plunders you seek here. For there is much greater treasure in the deep jungles, waiting for you if you have the strength to wrest it from evil ends. I have heard of no such treasure, you say. He waves his hand for you to sit. Then stay for a moment, and I shall tell you of the lost city of ivory. Make a note of the experience marks, the treasure and the weapons and armor you have gained in this book, for they will help you as you search for the lost city of ivory in book 4. The Fire Demon. End of book 3. I didn't expect to end it now. Uh, I, I didn't expect it. But, okay. No problem. Uh, I make a good choice to continue until the end. So, uh, next time, uh, <laughs> uh, there is only two encounters to the end. So, why not? So, for today it's all, for this evening it's all, it's a bit late, a quarter past seven as I promised, promise, um, as I promised, well, anyway. Uh, next time we begin the last book of Sagar the Barbarian, the Fire Demon. Time for today is all, have a nice day, a nice evening, a nice dinner, a nice everything, bye.